just how bad is supercharging bad for your Tesla Model 3 battery if you can't charge at home? Let's look at the facts. Hi, I'm Joy. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time watching my videos, I document my Tesla Model 3 owner experience to help new and future owners learn more about this car. If you enjoy this video and find this helpful and informative, please consider subscribing. For the last two weeks, I have been talking about Tesla Model 3 battery maintenance, care, and charging habit after one year of ownership. Some of the people raised arguments and push back at me, especially about supercharging. You may or may not have known this, but a little over two years ago in May of 2017, a Tesla Model S owner posted on the Tesla Motors Club forum telling people that he found out his Model S supercharging rate had been dramatically reduced at superchargers on a recent road trip. What I want to update on this information from two years ago is that a lot of people did not actually read into details on what had happened to this Model S owner and his battery and his charging habit. So here are the facts on what happened to this person two years ago. And I'm linking all the article information in the description box so you can read them for yourself as well. Number one, this person had been doing Chatamo DC fast charging instead of the Tesla supercharging 99% of the time. So this is the first differentiation with what this owner was doing compared to the rest of the Tesla drivers when they supercharge. And secondly, here is Tesla's response. According Tesla engineers, once vehicle has been DC fast charged over a specific amount, the battery management system restricts DC charging to prevent degradation of the battery pack, which we knew because from the Tesla Model 3 owner's manual, that's exactly what it was saying. According to Tesla engineers, this particular vehicle, the older Model S, has seen significant DC fast charging and is now has permanently restricted DC charging speeds. Again, according to the manual from the Model 3, that's what it was going to do. However, a lot of people skip this. Important to note, supercharging will always be available to the vehicle and the battery pack has not yet experienced significant degradation due to the amount of DC fast charging performed on the pack up until this point in time. Vehicle is operating as designed. So as you can see, Tesla restricted the DC fast charging rate permanently on this particular vehicle because the owner was abusing it. He was using Chatamo chargers rather than the designated Tesla supercharging network. And there's a difference in that because the Tesla supercharging network has built in battery charging protection algorithm to work in conjunction with a Tesla car battery. So your battery will not experience constant high heat, which is what's going to damage the battery cell with the current coming into the battery at a sustained rate and time. But with Chatham mode fast charging, I don't know which network he was on. So my speculation is that whatever the channel charging he was using did not have that protection built in. And therefore, Tesla detected this and took a precautionary step to permanently reduce the charging rate for this vehicle so that the battery will have longer life versus being damaged at a higher rate. The main takeaway from this point is that even with all the significant DC fast charging sessions that this person has done, his Tesla battery did not degrade all that much or it was damaged in any way. Later on, Tesla put out a statement. It was a whole paragraph and it was pretty much the same as what the Model 3 owner manual has stated, except 
the very last sentence of this paragraph. It says, "This change due to age and usage of the battery may increase total supercharge time by about five minutes, and less than one percent of our customer experience this." For those of you who have argued with me that I supercharge once a week, that is bad for my battery. Not really, because I don't fall into that one percent of the customer where they supercharge or do DC fast charge several times a day. And the Tesla statement continues, where it says Tesla is not slowing down charge rates to discourage frequent supercharging. Quite the opposite. We encourage our customers to use the supercharger network at their discretion. And we are committed to doubling the number of worldwide chargers just this year, back in 2017. We also want to ensure that our customers have the best experience at those superchargers and preserve as much vehicle range as possible, even after frequent charge. So there you have it. Tesla does not discourage frequent supercharging. And many of you have actually made this statement to me in the comments section, saying Tesla doesn't recommend that you supercharge so often. Well, it's actually quite the opposite. So hopefully, this is setting the record straight about the frequency of doing supercharging with your Tesla car. But just to double check and confirm what Tesla saying is true. Against real-world user data, I reached out to a company called Testloop. If you didn't know about Testloop, they were running shuttle services in the Southern California area using a fleet of Tesla Model S and Model Xs, and recently they acquired a Model Three into their fleet as well. Testloop has vehicles that hold the highest mileage usage record. Out of the entire Tesla cars produced and used out there, and they do frequent supercharging. I reached out to Testloop and asked, "Have you guys seen any supercharging rate reduction from Tesla because you guys supercharge so frequently?" And here's Testloop's response: "We have no reason or data to make us believe that Tesla is throttling or reducing supercharging rates." Based on high usage of superchargers, so even as much as Testloop is running their cars and supercharging, Tesla still has not reduced supercharging rate for their fleet. So I think for the rest of us that are not using our cars to run shuttles or one-way LA to San Diego trips daily, we can rest assured that. It most likely will not happen to us, at least not for a very, very long time. Another point that people have been arguing and pushing back at me is supercharging is bad for your Tesla Model Three battery because it's putting in so much heat on the battery cells, and lithium-ion batteries do not like heat. While that is true. And several of you have shared the Battery University articles with me, which I have already read many, many months ago. That is true for the generic lithium-ion battery. None of your arguments had included how the Tesla battery management system and the supercharging flow technology are playing into. Protecting the Tesla Model Three batteries when they're being supercharged. One of our viewers shared this article with me. Thank you so much for this. Showing that a mechanical engineer and a licensed HVAC engineer in California took apart the new Tesla Model Three battery back in August of 2018. Because that's when Tesla is coming out with the performance version and track mode, which would heat up the battery like crazy. And what they found was that the new Model Three battery module is a completely new design. It bears very little resemblance to the Model S. It has improved cooling over Model S and Model X modules. The two main 
differences that the Model 3 has improved battery cooling are number one, better heat transfer between the cells and the cooling ribbon. And number two, fewer cells per pass of the cooling tube. Basically what's saying is the Tesla Model 3 battery design has a much, much advanced cooling system so that when you are charging the car or specifically supercharging the car or even running in track mode, it is not going to damage the battery cell much at all compared to the old Model S or Model X battery design. Furthermore, they stated that they were speculating even before August of 2018 that the Model 3s were being shipped with Gen 3 supercharging capability or now we know as V3 supercharging that goes up to 250 kilowatt charging rate. Superchargers are more powerful and better cooling is necessary to keep cell temperatures down. The new Model 3 cooling system should help in that department. So according to experts and according to scientific studies, frequent supercharging for your Model 3 is not going to be bad for your battery. It is only when you do non-Tesla DC fast supercharging at Chatamo stations, for example, and when you're doing this several times a day or many, many times a week, that you may start seeing Tesla throttling your supercharging rate and that your battery may see some degradation. But for the rest of us, we shouldn't worry about this much at all. I hope the information I've shared in this video has helped you to ease your fear, worry, and anxiety over having to frequently supercharge if you can charge at home. Again, if you enjoyed this video and found the information helpful, don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a like, make comments down below, ask me questions, or if you do frequent supercharging, have you seen Tesla throttling your supercharging speed? I have not found other incidents other than the one back in 2017, so I am really interested to learn if Tesla is still doing this. And until next time I see you, have a blessed week.